Okay, so uh, we're looking at um, overcoming challenges and uh, as individuals, as a couple, um, just to be aware of the fact that, yes, um, you know, just because we are living, we have challenges. Lord Jesus himself said, in this world, you will have um, challenges, you will have tribulations, uh, but be of good cheer for I have overcome. So um, the thing is, the reality is that a challenge, when challenges affect uh, us personally or our marriage, it is a painful thing, no doubt. You know, we're not in any way minimizing uh, the pain. Uh, it is a painful thing, um, but we can go beyond. We can receive healing, we can go beyond that. Right, so that's the good news. That's the um, that's a, that's the encouragement that we have from our Lord and from Scripture that there is a life beyond, uh, you know, those challenges um, that we can live as overcomers. We can go through and come through. Right. Okay. Now we're going to look at some more challenges that we could be we could potentially face. Okay. Um, and one such. Um, challenge is in the area of um, uh, the fact that uh, that there could be a, a spouse in a marriage who's unsaved you know how does this happen well uh, it could be because uh, you know as a couple or as a husband and wife right you one person came to came to know the lord right you were not saved when you got married uh, but then now uh, in the course of marriage, uh, in the course of you know married life, one one person comes to um, know the Lord, and the other person is not saved. Okay? And because of that, there are potential, you know, there's potential tension and conflict and challenges like in the family. Um, and uh, the other thing could also be that, um, well, um, while getting married. Even though the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Um, well, one person just chose to ignore that. And uh, because, you know, all kinds of reasons, you know, you were emotionally attached to the person and a number of reasons. Um, but you made that choice, you know, the person, you, one just makes the choice based on emotions, based on the fact that, okay, um, he or she is a good person. Uh, and then go goes on to make you know, make that commitment, get married. Uh, and then you realize that, well, the person has very strong views about, uh, you know, about uh, worldview, about uh, uh, their own worldviews. And then, you know, uh, no matter what, the person is not in a position, is not in a place to receive Christ. So that also causes a lot of tension. That is that is a challenge. Okay. Um, so this is what uh, the Word of God talks about. You know, one Corinthians seven, we, uh, uh, Paul writes about you know this these kind of scenarios that can happen. And uh, in one Corinthians seven, we see this. Um, uh, uh, this is verse twelve, right? Uh, to the rest, I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe. And she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. Right? And uh, verse 14, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. Um, but if... Um, if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For how can you be, uh, how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? Okay, so now, now this is, uh, you know, this verse many times is taken out of context and then, and used and then reasoned uh, and, and people use it to, say, to marry unbelieving uh, people. Okay, so this is a this is a situation where the husband, where, where two people are already married, and uh, and then one comes to 
know the Lord is saved, the other one is not saved, right? And so, so Paul is writing to such uh, people or such in in such people in such in uh, situations, uh, saying that okay, this is what uh, this is the scenario, and this is what has happened. Um, if that one person, you know, the, the, there are obviously there are conflicts, there are differences, there are things that are happening. Uh, but it's saying that he's saying that if uh, you know the uh, wife who does not believe is willing to live, is willing to stay, um, the differences are not so sharp. Uh, then let them stay, let them live. And so also it applies to the husband as well. You know, husband is saying, okay, uh, that's fine. You believe this, I believe that, but then I'm willing to stay, and you know, let's. Let's go through life together, fine. You know, let them stay. Let them continue. Um, but also it says that if the unbeliever departs, okay, so the initiative is taken by the unbeliever, the person who does not believe. But if the unbeliever departs, um, let them do so. Whether it's the woman or the man who uh, does not believe, is not saved, uh, and they they are saying, okay, uh, I want to, you know, I want to end this marriage. Uh, I want to leave. Then saying that, okay, if they want to, then it's okay. You're not under bondage in such cases. Right? You're not under bondage. Again, you know, it is a painful thing, right? Uh, separation is painful. Um, uh, not undermining that, but the scriptural instruction is if they want to go, and if they are say adamant on saying that I, you know, I want to end this, then let them go. Okay, let them um, depart, because uh, you are not under bondage in such cases. Okay, so First um, Peter three and verse twelve. Sorry, three verses one, one and two. Let me just put that up. In the same way, you wives must submit to your husband so that. If any of them do not believe God's word, your conduct will win them over to believe. It will not be necessary for you to say a word because they will see how pure and reverent your conduct is. Okay, so the first case is like if they want to leave, they can go. Um, they are not you're not bound in that case. Um, but even in one Corinthians seven, Paul writes and he says that, uh, you know, verse sixteen. You know, how can we be sure that uh, you know your life, your conduct, will draw them to Christ and they will get saved? Okay, so that's good enough reason to continue on, even though it could be difficult because the person might restrict uh, your living for Christ. Right, saying, okay, you cannot do this, uh, you cannot have prayer here. Um, well, okay, once a, once a week, church is fine, but then, you know, don't bring that into the house. You know, let's not have any Bible study here, no praying with the children. You know, all these kinds of things could happen. But uh, your life and conduct could win the spouse over. Okay, and and first Peter, Peter also talks about the same thing. It says, you know, when you when you submit yourselves to the husband, and the, so also applies to the husband, to the unbelieving wife, you know, how they would conduct themselves. So if even if the other person does not believe God's word, okay, so your life, your life conduct and how you live, your behavior, your attitude, everything will win them over to Christ. And they do not, you don't even have to say a word, right? Because now words, reasonings, um, it's not going to help because um, the other person might think, okay, you have an agenda now, right? They're not able to objectively see the truth. They're not seeking the truth in the first place. They're not able to objectively see the truth because now you as a husband or you as a, as a wife, you're saying, okay, this is, this is what I believe in, and and you know it's not it's not going to help unless they see the life, they see the life, they see the life, um, which means the words, the attitudes, the motives, the thoughts, the actions, everything, 
and they see it consistently it's not just on a sunday when you return from church uh, from the church service but it's through the week on a monday tuesday wednesday you know how does this person make choices how does this person uh, make certain decisions and how do they respond react to circumstances uh, all that so because of their life they'll be one over so which means that that opens their heart okay and maybe i can consider now there is something to it maybe now i will i can probably give a chance to listen to what they have to say right so far i i've just completely closed now i look at the life of my husband i look at the life of my wife despite all that i have done and all that i have said all the things that i have restricted and all that um, you know i've made life difficult for her i've made life difficult for him but i see the life they are living continuing to live maybe there is something more to it right and so maybe it's time that i actually listen to what they have to say about why they made that choice you know really sit and listen i have not done that so far but really maybe i can or even if i've heard maybe i can give an opportunity for jesus maybe i can give one you know take that step open my life and see what will really happen right so that kind of a place the spouse is able to come to if we live a you know a consistent life okay um so some key learnings is this that uh, we see that god because we are righteous and we are in that place we are the righteous one in that house um well god will bless our spouse and the children as well okay again i want to repeat this reiterate that, that this is a situation of uh, two people who maybe got married when they didn't know christ right and now one of them has come to know christ so it's not like one person knows christ one person does not know christ and then you know they make a decision right um it is uh, well that could also happen uh, maybe a wrong decision maybe a wrong choice uh, and you're living with the consequences you know one is living with the consequences of that um but you know this is the scenario okay so the thing is that we see that god will bless it says okay god this whatever the blessing that you are receiving as a as a sanctified as a righteous person you know the household is also experiencing that same blessing god chooses to bless because of your faith okay but uh, we also see you know if the spouse willfully abandons and leaves because of your faith it's fine it's okay um you know uh, but then the believing spouse is free to end that marriage if there is abandonment okay so that is the thing that is a sequence if there is abandonment if the person chooses to leave and then you know they can the logical conclusion is that yes this marriage legally comes to an end okay there is a legal separation um so that is that is possible okay so um which gives rise to another question you know so what about divorce okay um what about divorce what does scripture um yeah yeah yes rosalind so your question is you know can um can that person remarry in such case you know so so the the so again let me just spell it out you know like so the person has abandoned the husband has abandoned and gone because he is of a different faith doesn't want to continue in marriage so the marriage ends legally which means that there is a you know legal divorce that happens because of the you know uh, uh, the law of the land the legal divorce that happens and in that case can the person remarry well the answer is yes and the uh, and the uh, uh, and the reason is this because the divorce happened for uh, you know a biblically allowed uh, reason okay a scriptural reason then the remarriage is also possible okay we are going to look at that um, um you know what are the uh, what are the scenarios in which 
um, the Bible says, okay, uh, divorce can happen. But first of all, you know, what are God's thoughts about divorce? Okay, so I hope I answered that question, Rosalind. No? Um, but we'll, you know, when we look into this, we will we will have even more, you know, reasons. Um, you know, uh, when we look into the word, right? So, so first of all, we just we just see that when we read Malachi two, we read Matthew five, and uh, all these scriptures. Let me just see if I can put this up. We see that God is actually, uh, yeah. These are some scriptures. Malachi two verses fourteen to sixteen, um, right? Um, Verse 16, especially if you see, God says, I hate divorce. For, says the Lord God of Israel, I hate it when one of you does such a cruel thing to his wife. Okay. Make sure that you do not break your promise to be faithful to your wife or to your spouse. Okay, so so this God's this is God's heart. Okay. Matthew chapter 5. The Lord Jesus, the words of the Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. 32. Um, anyone who divorces his wife must give a written notice of divorce, which means that uh, you can't be just frivolous about it, right? You can't just for any reason you cannot divorce. Verse 32, I but now I tell you, if a man divorces his wife for any reason other than her unfaithfulness, then he is guilty of making her commit adultery if she marries again. Okay. And the man who marries a commit adultery also. Matthew chapter 19. Some Pharisees came to him. This is verse 3. Some Pharisees came to him and tried to trap him by asking, Does our law allow a man to divorce his wife for whatever reason he wishes? Okay, this is the Lord's response. Jesus answered, Haven't you read the scripture that says that in the beginning the Creator made them male and female? And God said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and unite with his wife, and the two will become one. So they are no longer two, but one. No human being must separate then what God has joined together. Let not man separate what whom God has joined together. No. Then the Pharisees asked him, why then did Moses give the law for a man to hand his wife a divorce notice and send her away? Verse 8, Jesus answered, Moses gave you permission to divorce your wife because you are so hard to teach. And uh, another verse says, because of the hardness of your heart. But it was not like that from the beginning. And then the word, Lord again reiterates, verse 9, I tell you that any man who divorces his wife for any cause other than her unfaithfulness commits adultery if he marries some other woman. Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians 7, the scripture that we saw now. Paul writes, and he says, For married people, I have a command which is not my own, but the Lord's. A man must, a wife must not leave her husband. So this is again God's heart. Divorce is not an option, or not the first option. Verse 11, but if she does, she must remain single or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. Okay, so this is the first and foremost thing. God does not like divorce. Divorce is not God's plan. God not God's design. So, which means that every effort must be made in order to, uh, uh, in order to, not go in for that option of divorce. Every effort, every sincere effort, every option must be explored. How can you know this couple or how can i you know if, if you are the person who is uh, being affected how can i um you know stay in this marriage what do i need to do in order to stay in the marriage okay um verse uh, the verse that we read just now verse 15 you know a little earlier it says if one who is not a believer wishes to leave the christian partner or a believing spouse let it be so. So here, you know, so we, so when we put these things together, um, we understand that divorce is not God's heart. Divorce is not something that God wants. Um, that is not his plan and purpose. Okay. However, in these kind of scenarios, if one spouse is married, the other is, I mean, is, is a believer, the other is not. And the unbelieving person wants to leave then there is ground for divorce, which means, what is it? It means that it's 
abandonment. Okay, the person is just abandoning, leaving, and saying, I cannot continue, I want to leave. Okay, so in such a scenario, yes, the scripture does such uh, does say that yes, uh, divorce is permitted. But even then, one must, you know, uh, work at reconciling and see how, you know, the the marriage can be saved. But at the end of it, you know, after all effort is made, the unbelieving spouse chooses to leave. That's fine. Okay, then. From the words of the Lord Jesus, from what he, how he addressed the Pharisees, we see that if there is unfaithfulness, okay, um, again, when we say that if there is unfaithfulness, that's ground for divorce, that is also, it comes with the thing that even if there is unfaithfulness, even if there has been repeated unfaithfulness and the trust has been broken, well, there can be reconciliation. Right. So when we say unfaithfulness, we're saying that okay, whether the man, you know, had an extramarital affair, uh, whether the woman had an extramarital affair, um, you know, a physical relationship um, uh, with another person, and uh, you know, maybe it, it was there for you know some some times, a period of time, and you know, obviously, the spouse is hurt now that it has come, you know. It become public knowledge, maybe, or she's come to know. Is obviously hurt. Obviously, does not trust the person, right? So, even in that case, even in that place, if the husband is repentant, or if the wife is repentant, saying, you know, yes, I know this happened, but uh, can we put this behind? I, I'm repenting. Uh, I'm asking for forgiveness. Uh, this is. This is why it happened. Whatever you know, what could be the whatever could be the reason it does not justify that happening. But you know, this has happened. Uh, I, I'd like to come back and I, I and I seek forgiveness. I want to live uh, a morally upright life. Uh, you know, can you forgive? Can we be reconciled? Yes. You know, in that case, even the person who was hurt can ask for time and say, "I'm not ready yet." Right. I'm not ready yet. I need some healing. I need some restoration. You know, I need to think this over. Well, you can take time, give it time, and and scripturally, you know, there is possibility of healing. You can receive healing. You can be restored. Marriage can be restored. Right. However, you know, if that unfaithfulness is a repeated offense, if that unfaithfulness <coughs> continues on as a lifestyle the person is unrepentant the person doesn't want to you know excuse me you know is unwilling to change his or her ways now that's ground that's biblical ground or biblical uh, scriptural ground for divorce okay but with, uh, but also, you know, having exhausted that other option, in the sense you try to, you know, reason with the person to, and uh, you know, maybe there can be someone to speak wisdom and say you need to change. This is not the way. This, is, uh, and you know, having exhausted that option, uh, well, the Bible makes it plain. The words of the Lord Jesus: Yes, if there is unfaithfulness, then it's fine. Okay, so. Um, so either it's unfaithfulness, meaning adultery, or if there is abandonment, somebody just walks away. Okay. Now, what if there is there is uh, you know violence, right? What if there is violence in the sense the man is violent with the woman? You know, as uh, you know, in most cases. Yeah, I just want to be. If any of the spouse uh, is not repented for his or her act, and still the other person decides to stay in the marriage, uh, will it be wrong on his or her part in the eyes of God? Well, uh, well, Rosalind, the the thing is, it's a difficult scenario. You know, it's 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 going to hurt. Uh, you know, maybe you know this person is staying on for the sake of the children. The person is not repenting. You know, the one who is uh, maybe the husband or the wife is just not repenting, just continuing to live the way he or she wants to live. It's affecting, definitely affecting the marriage. Well, but if if the if the spouse is choosing 
you know, saying, you know, I, I still believe that God can work things out. I still believe that this person will change. And I'm I'm staying on because I, you know, maybe with children, his lives are at stake and, you know, they are, they are already, their life is affected because of this. But then saying, okay, um, I'm, I won't, I don't want to further cause any damage. I'm going to stay and I'm going to work things out. And I'm believing God. Well, um, it is, it is fine. You know, it is fine in the eyes of God. It is actually, you know, absolutely. She's doing a noble thing. It's a difficult thing, uh, but it's, it's fine. You know, it's, it's what God's heart is, right? Um, uh, but it's a difficult thing, right? And um, yeah, social pressure. Well, kids are primary. Now that's a that's a valid reason to continue to work things out. But social pressure, not so much, you know, because um, you know others can say, the relatives can say, in-laws can say a lot of things, but they are not going through it, you know, personally themselves. So, uh, you know, it could be mistreatment, it could be, you know, verbal abuse, it could be sexual abuse, it could be whatever. No, they are not going through it. They are not facing it. But here is this person facing it day in and day out and living under that roof. So um, social pressure, not so much. It's it's fine. You know, you can just actually uh, negate that. But But yes, if there are children involved and for the sake of the children, yes, that's a good enough reason. Um, but it's again a difficult choice, a difficult decision, and uh, um, having made the decision, that definitely there is God's grace to empower that person to live that life, and uh, God will give ample opportunities for the unrepentant spouse to change. You know, um, but it's thin ice. You know, it's uh, that person is living a very dangerous life. The person is moving away from you know god's protective hand right it's moving oneself away from continuing to live in sin opening his life or her life you know to the works of the enemy and the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy it so it's a dangerous thing that they're doing but um, yeah right so um so if if there is you know yeah so if there is a thing so if the person does not repent now, now this is the consequence okay but if the person repents you know and we've you know we uh, there are stories of reconciliation and restoration and even from the depths of um, you know uh, immorality on one person's life unfaithfulness and you know that has happened right okay um, so another uh, when it comes to remarriage, okay, so in all these cases, if it's a biblical reason um, because of which the divorce took place, unfaithfulness, abandonment, uh, let's say domestic violence, okay, so if there is violence, the, the cause of action would be self-preservation, okay, maybe violence in the home, and uh, one needs to save one's life, so um, if there's danger, you know, violence to that extent, right, or even otherwise, to protect. So for that sake, there can be separation, right? You know, I, I can't take that violence, I can't take that hitting anymore, right? I can't, I don't, I, I don't want to. And this is not how God's design is for marriage. So, well, let's, let's be apart physically till better sense prevails. There has to be, you know, some kind of maybe counsel or input uh, for both, right? One person to receive healing and uh, from that trauma of uh, being violated, uh, and for the other person to uh, to receive input and counsel that this is not how it is, and it is well. Not only is it um, scripturally wrong, it is against the law of the land. Like it's a it's an offense, right? And uh, they can be penalized, put in prison for this. Uh, and in in some countries, it's, the laws are very strict against domestic violence, right? Even as so much as scratch uh, that that person is inflicted, well, they can be put behind bars, um, and the punishment is very strict. So, well, in all these ways, uh, the person is of person is an offender. So, definitely separation. Uh, till better sense prevails and counsel is received and change, you know, visible, tangible change happens. And then, yeah, yeah, for the husband and wife to live together again, 
right? And for them to uh, maybe have individual counseling uh, initially, um, and uh, maybe they're not ready for joint session yet, but then come to a place of having a joint session of counseling together, and then the way forward, right? In case of domestic uh, violence. But in case of domestic violence, okay, it's been a pattern, nothing has worked. Uh, repeatedly, you know, this is what is happening, then that is again scriptural grounds for divorce. Right. Um, so so when when there's a scriptural ground for divorce and the divorce happens for these reasons, not not for the sake of okay, I uh, I don't like this person anymore. We are not in cap in we are we are in incompatible, we're not compatible anymore. Uh, you know, not for those kinds of reasons, trivial reasons, right? Uh, we, know, we, we, we find we find that we are not uh, compatible we're not able to relate to each other anymore not for those kind of things you know uh, so if the divorce happens for these kind of reasons then it just goes um, uh, for scriptural reasons if it happens then for scriptural reasons remarriage can also happen okay because uh, we read in um, uh, let me just read uh, 1 Corinthians 7 um uh let me just read that scripture again um i think it's here yeah um romans 7 2 and 3 okay romans chapter 7 verses 2 and 3 okay for the woman who has a husband is bound bound by law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, uh, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. So he, here in the case of, uh, in this case, it's about the death of a spouse. So um, the person having died, now uh, that is, you know, uh, the spouse has died, um, uh, spouse is dead, so therefore there is a cause, there is a ground for remarriage. Okay. The other thing that we see is um, uh, 1 Corinthians 7. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 7 and verse uh, 7. Uh, for I wish that all men were even as I myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and the other in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain as I am, but if they cannot, he's talking about exercising self-control, if they cannot, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So he's talking about remarriage again. So he's talking about people who are uh, uh, either widows or unmarried, okay, and uh, when, you, when you're talking about unmarried, of course, you're talking about people who are single and people who are also uh, who are maybe legally the marriage has been dissolved, right? So saying, okay, it is good for them to remain even, as, but if they cannot let them remarry, okay? Then um, verse 39, same chapter. A woman is bound by law as uh, verses 30, uh, 38, 39, uh, 40 talk about same thing, echoes the same thing which Romans 7 talks about. So, so this is the thing, you know. So, if one person is a, a widow, if a person is, uh, you know, divorced for these kind of scriptural reasons, then remarriage is allowed for. The scriptural reasons again, remarriage is allowed. Uh, if the should the person choose to remain single, that's absolutely okay. Uh, but if if the person chooses to remarry, that is also fine, right? So, um, well, the thing is that um, you know, it's it's the 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 thing is this. You know, we need to be careful. Um, um, in you know, as a church, as a body of believers, you know, in uh, in one, you know, in approving certain things, and also in condemning. Okay, let's say the divorce has happened for X, Y, Z reasons, and then you know, there is a there is a possibility of 
um them wanting to remarry um well there has to be counsel of course there has to be counsel there has to be um uh, there has to be preparation for marriage uh, it should not be done hastily because there will be a repetition of the same kind of mistakes it should not be done hastily there should be uh, there should be preparation and there can be remarriage so as a church you know as as believers we need to kind of encourage you know once that that is stated once that is established uh, okay that is does this for these reasons that the person is remarrying and it's not a trivial thing and and so on um well as a church uh, it, it's not fair to keep condemning okay? oh you, you know the divorce happened because of unfaithfulness um and then you know maybe things have changed the person had a change of heart the person has um uh, you know has come to a place of repentance and etc but what has happened has happened okay and now the person wants to you know the, the, maybe the the divorce spouse uh, you know he or she has uh, uh, remarried and you know things have changed and then now here uh, if the person sh should so desire to again remarry and live and um, you know uh, live a normal life um, uh, you know uh, in a healthy marriage a healthy family uh, well they can do that but there should be proper preparation proper you know from uh, from from the side of the um, church or the ministry preparing uh, because now you know let's say if they were children you know the thing becomes very complex right it, it becomes a little complicated uh when it when it when you consider remarriage uh in what way is it complicated well first of all the baggage of the previous marriage the negative things that would have happened emotional baggage of the previous marriage now now that needs to be there needs to be healing there needs to be uh I'll just stop presenting this. Um, there needs to be healing. There needs to be uh, uh, restoration. There needs to be preparation right, uh, based on that. Um, if there were children from the previous marriage, okay, and the divorce happened, the separation happened, if there are children, and if uh, so, who has the custody of the children? Right? Does the husband has, have the custody? of the children does the wife have the custody of the children according to legally how it was settled in court and if the husband or the wife is seeking to remarry now there are children right so that also has to be considered so the preparation of marriage for marriage now is with the children in mind are the children ready are the children emotionally prepared to uh, to have this other person in their family, right? So because their biological father uh, continues to be the father, there could be visitation rights. Um, so it becomes a little more complex. So the children have to be prepared as well. Okay. So that is why scripture is very clear. Now, like, should the person Paul says, you know, if you don't want to, um, or you know, just remain as as you are. But um, uh, it, it's just, you know, his, his wisdom is saying, just remain as you are. But then if you should choose to remarry, then go ahead and do it. But it has these difficulties. It has these complexities. Not that you cannot face them, but you need to be aware of them and prepared mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Definitely be prepared uh, to face them. Right? It's not going to be easy, um, but it is possible. Okay, so you know we 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 need to look at all these things when we are considering remarriage. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, stop here, and you know maybe you have some questions um, about divorce, about remarriage. Um, we can talk about that. Any questions? Any questions at all? Okay. None whatsoever. <laughs> okay, fine. If there are no questions, uh, that's fine. I, I just thought that there could be some questions. 
especially you know uh, um especially about divorce when it comes to remarriage okay so i hope that um, you know this gives a clear uh, idea about um, about divorce uh, also about challenges right about challenges faced by the husband by the wife um, and how to face them overcome them etc right so uh, you can go over the notes again um, just to dwell on the scriptures that we looked at 1 Corinthians 7 Romans chapter 7 um, and and the words of the Lord Jesus in 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 the gospel of Matthew um, where he is uh, talking about you know marriage he's talking about divorce Malachi chapter 2 especially um, Matthew 5 Matthew 19 so all these scriptures um, uh, give us an understanding okay so so we live in a world that is um, it is uh, we see this prevalent right there are single parents um, there are blended families blended meaning you know people who uh, uh, divorce the husband is divorced the wife is divorced and then they remarry and they have children from the previous marriage as well as their own biological children right so um so so then you know there are children from a previous marriage and then children from this marriage so it's a um, that's what we call as blended families and so um when that happens well how we need the wisdom we need the wisdom of god um, to handle that um also with children you know that there should be no partiality right uh, now uh, no partiality in bringing up children and so it, it's a it's a big it's a big ask it's a big commitment right in the in such cases and one needs to be really uh, prepared in order to uh, go through such kind of marriages or, or be a parent right um, uh, and to make it make the whole thing work right but the fact is that the lord is in it right uh, and if we would um, invite the lord into that situation and the lord is in it the lord is for it so um so definitely you know one can make it work okay okay um so very um just wanted us to um, you now we'll quickly go through uh, the other aspect of uh, restoration and moving forward, which is to release things from the past. Okay, so I just want to quickly go through that. Let me just share that with you. Um, Yeah. So since we were talking from talking about um, you know divorce and remarriage, uh, obviously it it uh, it involves moving forward. Okay. Like we said, okay, we don't want the past to control our present, and definitely we don't want things happening um, that in the present challenges um, uh, to uh, to affect our future. Right. Definitely not. But the thing is, how will that happen? You know uh, to to desire yes i i don't want my present to affect my future i don't want my past to affect my present to desire that is great but we need to do something in the natural right we need to do something um uh, in the emotional realm uh, or something uh, some receive something like for our emotions in order to be able to do that so that is to release the past so when we say release the past okay we are talking about releasing those hurts, those hurts that happened because of our people who are who been close to us, hurts that happened because of words, because of uh, maybe their attitude towards us, maybe their actions. You know. So if I were to ask you right now, you know, uh, can you think of uh, one thing that's there on the top of your mind? You know, some someone who hurt you, someone who spoke anything uh, to you know ill against you i'm sure some something immediately comes to your mind right maybe in a few seconds you remember certain uh, maybe that someone and the, who spoke certain things uh, and you uh, in, in a few few seconds you know it comes to our mind so that means that we we still maybe we have forgiven but that is still there in our minds now that's a reality in the sense um 
we forgive well we forget we receive healing um but the memory remains we need to understand that of those events of those things that happen the memory remains um while the memory could remain but the pain of that memory need not right the pain of that what we went through need not be there okay uh there's a question here what can we do if one of the spouse didn't see his or her ex expectation in his pa uh, partner after getting married okay so so that is what we looked at now now that is you know the, the there's expectation of uh, okay this is what uh married marriage would be like now the expectation can be um, uh, realistic the expectation can be very unrealistic expectation right so like one might have a very unrealistic okay maybe you watched the movies and you saw that okay happily ever after and oh wow this is a you know it's like uh it's like a uh, you know it's like a picture out of a uh you know out of uh, you know out of postcard or whatever you know you see that so it can be a very unrealistic expectation at times but if it is a real ex realistic expectation right okay this is what i expect now the thing to do is okay how can i communicate that expectation okay how can i communicate that expectation with my spouse um well maybe uh you know can i maybe it's something to do with the love language uh maybe it's something to do you know uh, what is the expectation okay maybe it could be something physical emotional you know um that expectation is not met because maybe that person is communicating in a wrong way so we looked at the love language okay how do i receive love how do i feel treasured how do i feel wanted nourished and cher uh, cherished um when you know maybe when the person spends quality time maybe when the person when there's physical touch physical intimacy maybe when there is uh yeah you know um uh, when there's words of affirmation you know when the person says it maybe when there's person gives a gift um you know all these different ways by which the person can communicate right maybe that uh, maybe the spouse is not um communicating in the right way Okay, maybe that person thinks that okay if i do this you know um maybe i you know i'm spending time but why is that person not thinking that you know uh, i'm i'm loving and i'm cherishing i'm spending time am i not well the other, other person feels that okay it's not spending time but actually if you open your mouth and say it then i feel love okay so unmet expectations could be because of this gap in uh, you know communication of the love language right so it could be because so it can be it can be sorted when there is a, a counsel when there is a marriage counseling and uh, you know scriptural marriage counseling this can be sorted and uh, so there can be an understanding of expectations oh this is how this person feels loved or oh, this is how this person feels wanted so then i know i've been doing it wrong so let me now you know open up and share open up and communicate the way the person wants it so it can be you know it can be as um, it can be changed and it can be met that way but it's very important they are to not to assume that the other person knows about my expectations but to really you know share it i hope that helps abubakar yes sir yes sir thank you very much sir thank you sir yeah right okay so um so the, we were talking about releasing the past releasing the hurts right so um so the thing is that well we can go into the future uh step into the future remember these events that have happened and uh, come to a place of um, not feeling those hurts okay okay uh, another question uh, how can we deal with this we have no ill feeling against the person we have forgiven them but keep talking about that person to others whenever that topic comes in and um, uh, yeah in a very light manner okay um, and not getting angry okay so there's no anger there's no bitterness uh, but then you you bring that up in conversations you bring that person which means you remember that incident uh, in conversations 
uh, but you're actually in a light manner in the sense you're making fun of it. Um, yeah, you're making fun of the whole thing. Well, as long as both are enjoying it, you know, laughing about it, that's fine. You know, you're forgiven. You are saying as long as both, uh, as long as it's not gossip, you know, as long as not uh, maligning the other person's reputation or whatever. And uh, as long as, you know, if the person was there, would they also enjoy? Um, then that's fine. And if it's a husband and wife, well, if that whole thing is beh behind you and if it's not, you know, very sensitive, if you would talk in a public setting and the other person is also you know laughing right along with you um then i i guess it's it's okay right in the okay in the absence of that person okay that person is not there then you just need to make sure that it's not gossip that it's not uh you know something that's um you know uh, kind of um interfering with the reputation of that person bringing down the name of that person reputation of that person and as long as it's not communicated in that manner um then it's fine right yeah so that's the thing okay so i guess uh yeah we we have time uh only uh, we just need to wind up okay so we'll stop here and um yeah so pressing forward this this chapter 12 uh i'd really uh, uh like us to uh, you know, go through it and as a self study, right? Uh, because we're going to be dealing with it, um, you know, uh, in healing and deliverance also, uh, or you already dealt with it, I'm not sure. But uh, so I just wanted to be a self study. You can go through it, you can go over it. And uh, the next class, we'll straight away jump into, um, you know, chapter 13, which, which is about boundaries, which is more to do with, you know, uh, uh, marriage relationship, right? Protecting it rather. So we'll go into chapter 13 straight away. Okay, right. Thank you. God bless. See you again.